Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Hi, everybody. So today we are going to talk about the ultrasound of the renal transplant um, and a basic approach to this sort of study. So bigger picture, renal transplants are one of the most common, um, if not the most common, transplants that are currently performed. Um, so this sort of study is done to evaluate you know, the function of the transplant, whether there's any complication. And it's, it's really important in approaching this sort of study to understand the type of the transplant, type of transplant that was done, when it was done, any complications since, any new uh, clinical presentations that impact how you want to look at this or what you're suspecting in terms of potential complication, um, if there is going to be one. Okay, so let's talk first about the overall um, organization of this approach. So like with uh, basically any sort of medical imaging, you have to understand the patient and what's going on. And you know, I touched on a couple of key points, and we'll go into that uh, further. We'll look at the entirety of this study. Um, and this can be done, you know, integrated with the search pattern is basically to go through and make sure that we have adequate images, grayscale, color, spectral Doppler of the uh, you know, the transplant kidney and then, you know, as, as well as the bladder, the, you know, ureteral anastomoses, the arterial, you know, arterial venous anastomoses, um, basically all of the relevant anatomy for renal transplant. Just make sure that's all there. It's adequately acquired. Um, and then we're going to go through and evaluate the kidney. And it's, it's useful to kind of think of um, the evaluation in terms of what are we looking for in terms of complications or potential abnormalities on grayscale Doppler, on color Doppler, on spectral Doppler, and then, you know, taking a look at those velocities and the resistive indices and comparing between exams as well as um, against, you know, more, you know, uh, thresholds of normal abnormal. And then finally, we're also looking at the bladder um, and any kind of ureteric, uh, ure ureteral um, anastomotic site to see if there's any issues there. So that's kind of the big picture sort of organization of this sort of evaluation. All right. All right. So let's get started. Um, this is basically what a uh, renal transplant ultrasound uh, you know, ultra, uh, looks like. Um, the, the, the pictures in this particular study are not necessarily, you know, they're, they're not very organized. You know, we see here some, you know, uh, grayscale and then color Doppler. And then we have a whole bunch of spectral Doppler interspersed throughout the various, you know, vessels of, uh, of interest. And then we're back to, you know, a couple um, uh, grayscale and color Doppler images uh, through the transplant kidney. Um, kind of interspersed finally in the bladder and then we have a whole bunch more spectral Doppler through areas of interest um, you know uh, I think this is this is mostly you know at least to conceptualize from the beginning of this study we see the kidney we see you know measurements within the kidney another you know uh, appearances of the kidney of the bladder and then this is kind of the vasculature that attaches the kidney um, to you know the um, you know uh, external iliac system uh, arterial and venous um, and then we've kind of got some uh, you know, some things near the hilum um, at the end, right? So let's kind of, you know, take a step back and, and think, you know, things to just keep in mind in terms of putting putting this exam in context, you know. Um, you know, so, you know, the checklist generally is knowing when the transplant was done, you know, and, and then... Um, what sort of transplant was it? You know, a living or deceased? You know, you know, an on block or you know, two kidneys? You know, know how many uh, arteries and veins are transplanted? If there's been complications? If there's been issues since? You know, it's important to also know if the patient. You know, this this uh, transplant kidney has been recently biopsied. You want to know how, how many uh, prior transplants they've had, where this transplant is, and you want to know if there's kind of any sort of specific. Uh, uh, suspicion for a specific complication. Those are kind of useful things to know even before you head in. Um, and as we go through, and I was you know, showing you th uh, through this particular study, you just want to have a sense as to whether there's adequate coverage of the entirety of the anatomy on grayscale, color, and spectral Doppler. You know, um, you know we're going to be looking at you know, to keep in mind the main renal artery. You're, we're going to look at upper, mid, and lower you know, intralobar segmental arteries, and then the venous vasculature um, and the corresponding, you know, distribution throughout the kidney. We're going to look at the bladder and any kind of anastomosis to the bladder. Um, and we're going to look at, 
you know, uh, you know, I, I also, you know, so in some cases you can have like a stent or a drain. You want to see, you know, you want to have that imaged or full catheter if that, you don't have that imaged. Um, you know, and then make sure that we're seeing also, you know, the, the attachment of the vasculature to the external iliac system, um, uh, you know, and th- you see that those are adequately uh, acquired and that, the, the, you know, that we can get a fair sense of the velocities and, you know, resistive indices wherever it is we need them. Um, so just as a big picture, what it is that comprises this study, what we need to make sure that we're looking at. So as we go through and we look particularly at the grayscale images, and these are a little bit interspersed, we get. So we'll start with this one. You know, you want to get a sense of, first of all, you know, where is this kidney? You know, this is a right lower quadrant uh, transplant. Um, we want to make sure we're looking at the right one if the patient has, or no, the, let's, let's say the appropriate one if the patient has multiple transplants. Um, is in the right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant. Where is it? Um, are we looking at the appropriate kidney? Um, what's the size that we have it measured here? Do we? Is there, is there any change prior? Is there any you know sense of overall? Is it, does it look edematous? Does it look you know inflamed? You know, are we seeing on this gray, grayscale images? And we're going to correlate this kind of you know sagittal image with the, you know the more cross you know the, the ones we have further further down. When we when we were looking through. Um, the upper part, mid pole, lower pole, you know, mid midpoint, and then kind of the lower pole, uh, the kidney, you know, where we're asking, do we see normal cortical and medullary echogenicity? You know, can we see that differentiation um, uh, in echogenicity between those areas? Are there any new areas of scarring of atrophy? Is you know, are we always talk about edema, and then and then there's any focal lesions? You know, be they cystic, solid? Um, you know, uh, on uh, do they have kind of um, kind of like a more tubular or serpentine appearance that maybe you think vascular lesions are there echogenic foci that would make you think calculi um, is if we look at the collecting system which you know you have to kind of correlate um, between the sagittal view and the kind of more uh, cross-sectional images here where we do catch the um, collecting system is there hydronephrosis um, is it, you know what is the nature of the fluid inside of the collecting system? Is it complex? Is there anything layering? And are is there any collections or abnormalities surrounding the kidney? Perinephric collection, stranding, free fluid, um, and then you know, also on gray scale, are we seeing anything incidentally surrounding the kidney that is, is potentially of interest? Okay. Um, when we do have the uh, color Doppler images, we're looking grossly because we're also going to look more specifically on spectral Doppler. Is the arterial and venous vasculature grossly patent, you know, is there symmetric flow? Is there, you know, are there areas where, there we, where, where, where we have a correlate um, abnormality on color Doppler and on grayscale uh, images, okay? So as we kind of go through, we're looking at that. Um, is there any sort of focal abnormality that would make you think about a pseudoaneurysm or an AV fistula, especially in the setting of, uh, you know, prior biopsy, uh, think, you know, things like that? Um, or if there's, you know, any suspicion, you know, that we see later on the spectral doppler that would key us off, then we, or can we characterize it on these sorts of images, okay? Um, the spectral Doppler images that we see throughout, and they're kind of dispersed here. It's very useful to have um, if you can, it can be done at your institution or you know at ours. It's, it's done by our technologists. Is that all the velocities are written in a sheet, and all the um, resistive indices of, of interest are written in a sheet, so you can so you can look at them as a whole rather than having to look at each particular image. Um, so you just want to make sure that as you go through that the you know the the the, the uh, region of interest is in an appropriate area. Um, you have good good measurements of each of these. So we've got you know segmental measurements, interlobar um, f- throughout the kidney. And you want to look at each of these. Your your and as we go through, in addition to uh, taking a look at the peak systolic velocity and the resistive index, index you're going to take a look at the the waveform. Um, and, and see, are there any sort of tardis parvus waveforms within the kidney, okay, that would make you think of an upstream stenosis, okay? You know, we're going through here and we're looking at um, kind of upper segmental. We've got some, the venous vasculature, so this is, this is you know, uh, can have a different waveform and making sure that we, when we get back to the, um, let's see, here we go. And then we're kind of clo- now looking at the uh, vasculature just outside the kidney, the hilum, and at the um, anastomosis to the external iliac system. Um, in the region of the hilum, are we seeing tardis parvus uh, as well? Are we seeing particularly, you know, as we go through and we're looking close uh, to the uh, arterial anastomotic site, is there elevated velocity, um, usually like kind of two times greater, you know, 
uh, kind of downstream to the anastomosis compared to the parent uh, vessel, which can, can make us think about um, like a, a, a stenosis at, at the anastomosis, okay? Um, and then as we go back and then we have the collected values, you know, how have the resistive indices changed compared to prior? Are any of them greater than 0.8? Um, what has there been their evolution over the course since time of transplant? Those are kind of questions you want to keep in mind. And then we're also looking here, making sure not just the arterial anatomy is patent, but the venous anatomy is patent and has kind of expected venous flow on the um, spectral Doppler images, okay? And we kind of went by quickly. Um, kind of images of the bladder, which we see here. And then, you know, just things that we would keep in mind just, you know, as, you know, per usual, when we are doing a sonographic evaluation of the bladder, you know, we're thinking about wall thickening, internal debris, mass lesions. We're looking for, you know, in particular for um, uh, a transplant, if the anastomosis of the, uh, you know, uh, the anastom, you know, the ureteral anastomotic site, is there any sort of abnormality there? Um, you know, if the patient has a Foley catheter and is it correctly positioned, sometimes, we, you know, we've seen actually it malpositioned, you know, and through the anastomotic site. Um, you know, is there any sort of, um, you know, if there ha has been hydronephrosis of the transplant kidney, can, can we track that to, you know, follow, um, you know, any dilatation through the, you know, kind of the transplanted ureter, or things like this? Um, uh, and, you know, once once you've taken a look at ba basically all the images of the kidney um, and then finally the bladder, uh, we're going to kind of you have to step back and put all of the, your findings into the context of, um, you know, when the transplant was done, what the um, suspicion is for particular uh, abnormalities, you know, elevations in resistive indices, uh, you know, evidence of abnormality in transplant kidneys are can be frequently nonspecific on imaging. They really have to be put into the clinical context to be made sense of. Okay? So that can give you a basic approach to evaluating these sort of exams. Transplant ultrasound can be kind of intimidating or, you know, seemingly complex at first, but um, you know, once you have a sense of these various steps, it can it can shed some light on how to do that. And so just as a quick summary of what we talked about, um, you know, major important things when we're doing renal transplant is to understand the patient, understand the history, surgical complication, et cetera, of the transplant itself. If there's been any prior biopsy, you understand this, you know, look at the study, see, do we have all the images we need across the various uh, grayscale, color, spectral Doppler? Do we see the, you know, the essential parts of the bladder? Um, and then go through it and we're going to look for evidence of complications, you know, um, changes in the renal parenchyma, changes around the kidney, edema of the kidney, hydronephrosis, things like this, focal lesions. And then we're looking for a preserved flow on, uh, on the color Doppler, ven uh, venous arterial, and then looking at the waveforms, looking at the resistive indices, looking for changes in velocity um, within the kidney, and then um, at the hilum, at the anastomotic site, you know, um, at the relevant vasculature on the spectral Doppler, uh, and then on the, and, and then when we're looking at the bladder, being particularly important to, uh, being particularly um, uh, careful to look at areas of the anastomosis, potential complications related to issues of outlet um, from the ureter to the bladder.